All right, I think we're ready to get started with the session. If everybody else is all set. So welcome to the Frankenstack versus Voltron session. Um, who's handling your customer experience? So my name is Katie Stavely. I'm the VP of Marketing for Modic. We're an open source marketing automation platform. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that stuff in a bit. So a little bit about um, who, who we are and who I am. So Modic, um, as I had mentioned, is an open source marketing automation platform. The community has been around for about five or six years now. Um, I actually work for the commercial business for Modic, and so we sell um, Modic as a SaaS solution, so fully hosted and managed um, for our customers, a subscription service, um, and we refer to that as uh, Modic's open marketing um, cloud solutions. Um, we're helping organizations of all sizes uh, uh, build marketing campaigns. Um, so me, I've been with Modic for about two and a half years as the VP of marketing. Um, prior to that, I had worked for a number of B2B marketing companies or software companies, uh, including Acquia. I was there for a couple of years early on when the company started. Um, so I've been to DrupalCon before, um, but for the first time here with Modic. Um, my focus is primarily demand gen and content. Um, aside from that, um, I have a, a lot of experience using marketing technology solutions. Power user of Modic, naturally, after, uh, you know, that's our solution. But I've used a number of different other marketing automation platforms and Salesforce and other CRMs and things like that. So a uh, lot of depth of experience um, handling these types of tools. So what we're going to talk about today um, in today's agenda, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a level set on the context, um, how I think about or how I'm going to talk about customer experience. I'm going to talk a little bit about the MarTech landscape that was released last week at um, the MarTech conference. I'm sure that Scott probably talked a little bit about that in his session. I didn't catch it this morning, but I'm sure he covered that. I'm just going to sort of give my take on um, you know, how that applies to this conversation, provide a few practical tips for you know, evaluating solutions for your team, um, and then a few takeaways on how to deliver a more personalized experience across your brand. So let's get to it. So, um, so customer experience. This is a topic that continues to hold momentum, um, you know, in our industry. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's trying to figure out what it means, what it means for their organization, um, you know. And that we, what we've observed is that, you know, marketers they they want to create memorable, great experiences for their customers, right? We all want want to be on that page. Um, you know, you want your customers to keep coming back and re-engaging re with your brand, um, purchasing more of what you're selling, you know, providing reviews and feedback, speaking highly of you when you're t they talk to their friends and customers and um, peers. Um, but what I've also observed along the way here is that it's really hard to achieve. One of the, and I, I believe that one of the leading inhibitors actually is our technology choices, which are directly impacting, um, you know, thousands, impacted by all the thousands of tools in that MarTech landscape, trying to puzzle them together into a highly functioning stack and then couple that with highly functioning teams that know how to use those and make them work together in a way that's, um, you know, delivering a well-oiled machine for your organization. So if we take a little bit of time to kind of peel away the onion, um, you know, we've established the customer experience already as the linchpin to, uh, you know, creating differentiation and sustained defensibility within your, um, within today's experience economy. So that's great. We all agree, right? Um, you know, but let's talk about what happens, um, you know, when the customer experience happens, it's not when they receive your marketing promo emails, right? We can all send emails, but is that the only time that they're experiencing your brand? Um, you know, it's every time they visit your website or any time they've made their first purchase. It's each and every one of the touch points that they're engaging with your brand, every interaction, every conversation, you know, today, tomorrow, and, and every day forward. Um, you know, and I think that if I were to poll the audience here today, that uh, building the kind of a relationship with your customers over, over time is important to your business. Um, and each of the conversations and interactions are opportunities to create a positive experience for your customers. So they become building blocks for that relationship. Relationship. So if we think about um, what does it really mean to build a relationship with your customers, right? First and foremost, you want to build a healthy relationship uh, and with a two-way dialogue. It can't be one-sided. You can't just be talking at your customers all the time about things that you want to talk about. It has to be a combination of what you want to talk about and what they want to talk about. You want to give them ways to connect with you and have a conversation with you and, and tell you what their interests are, what their needs are, and you know how you can be more helpful to them. 
it's also an exchange of value, right? It's not just, again, you know, us taking from, from them as, you know, providers or as solution providers or, um, you know, vendors. It's an exchange. We want to make sure that we're, we're giving and getting at the same time. So whether that's giving with, um, you know, new content or offers or things that could be useful to them, you know, even as simple as answering their questions. But it's also, you know, as we're asking for things for them from them, right, you know, uh, asking them to buy more product or asking them to, you know, provide more information about what their interests are and things. Um, it also is those little things that uh, make a difference. Saying, saying thank you when they download an asset or um, you know, giving them a, a, an offer when they uh, provide feedback on your solution. And lastly, relationships are about getting to know who they are and recognizing those customers when they come back. So interacting with them in the context and knowledge so they don't feel like a stranger every time they interact with you. And so imagine, you know, I sort of equate it to real life, right? So imagine that you had this person that you met, you know, let's say you met here at DrupalCon and you shook hands and had a coffee and learned a little bit about each other. And then you see them at the next Drupal meetup and they have no idea who you are, right? They forget, they don't remember your conversation. Okay, you reintroduce yourself. Oh yeah, we met at DrupalCon. And then you meet again and they still don't know who you are. They don't remember you. They don't remember your conversation. After a while, you're sort of like, why, why am I even bothering with this person? You, you totally write them off, right? It's not different with your brand. You want to make sure that you're engaging with your customers in the way that you want to engage in real life. You know, have a conversation, build a relationship, make sure that you're adding as much value as much as, you know, they're taking from you. Um, you know, and when, when companies fall short of building that type of personalized experience, they become selfish and inconsiderate, right? Just the way that person who you've interacted with in that, you know, fake scenario, um, you know, becomes, you know, feels a little bit inconsiderate to you, to you and to your needs. Um, and you risk becoming that annoying friend that nobody ever wants to talk to because, you, you, know, you know, it's never one two-sided. It's always one-sided. It's always their perspective or their interests. And so if we switch gears for a second, um, we talked a little bit about building relationships and, and hopefully you're sitting there saying, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely what we wanna do for our, for our customers. And the next logical step, I know if I was sitting there, I'd be like, okay, how do I do that? What do I do? Um, you know, I, I have to start by saying there is no silver bullet. You know, in marketing, we want that one thing that's going to be that great campaign or that great piece of content that's just going to, you know, get the, you know, the, the great results and the sales team's going to say, I love you marketing, and they never do. Um, but, you know, we, we have to think really smart about how important your tech stack it, it plays a role in, um, you know, building those relationships. So this is, um, you know, just off of, uh, I took a look at um, Scott's blog post from last week from MarTech, and, you know, I can't, I cannot, I personally cannot believe that we're now up to over 7,000 different solutions. You know, I, I run marketing for a company. The thought of me having to evaluate 7,000 solutions is completely insane. And so, you know, as we think about um, having to deal with all of those different solutions, and, and frankly, you know, one of the things he pointed out that I thought was really interesting is that doesn't even include all the point solutions. So if I'm vertically oriented around healthcare or, um, you know, higher ed, you know, there's even a whole other subset of solutions that aren't even included on that, that graph. Um, but, you know, the way that I see it is that we have all this technology at our fingertips, but things are just becoming more and more complex where technology should be making them easier and easier. Um, and so we have to be really smart about how we're managing that technology and what we're really doing with it. You know, I, I wonder if we're going to get to a point as marketers having to have one person whose sole job is to just manage technology, evaluating, reevaluating, negotiating contracts, making sure we're optimizing, making sure we're using it efficiently. Um, you know, it, it makes it, there's so much of it out there that it makes it really difficult to, to think about. And so one of the one quick stat that we had come across recently is that 3% of marketers believe that they're totally connected and aligned across their systems, 3%. So we take a step back and we think about this MarTech stack, which you can see kind of in the background there, all of those different solutions. And then, you know, we get to this and it's like, oh, well, yeah, of course. How, how could I possibly make sure that all these things are seamless and working? You know, I have one team using this tool and another team using that email tool and another team using a CMS and another team using social. It's really challenging to pull all these things together. So if we take a step back and say, okay, we really want good experiences for our customers. Yep, check, that's, that's on our list. Um, good experiences depend on relationships. Yep, absolutely. Relationships are formed in two-way dialogue, you know, exchanging value, understanding personalization, 
Um, we use technology, CMSs, marketing automation, CDP, CRM, so on and so forth, to facilitate those experiences at scale. Otherwise, we can just do it one-to-one -one and hire somebody to do that. And only 3% of marketers believe their systems are adequately connected. Um, it's, it's really, uh, it's astonishing. And it almost feels like it should be wrong. But, you know, thinking about that landscape and how internal teams work together across the organization with the technology, it doesn't really seem that surprising. And so if we're saying that the customer experience on our, um, depends on our internal systems talking across the organization, we have to take a step back and evaluate who's really handling our customer experience. Is it this guy, right? Is it, or, you know, is it Frankenstack who's walking around and sort of held together with some so, you know, sewed up arms and uh, buttoned on legs and, you know, however the monster was created with a little bit of uh, electricity? I don't know the full story, but something like that, right? Um, you know, loosely connecting your tools across your organization, um, you know, can oftentimes be more trouble than good, right? And the results are, you know, first and foremost, inefficiencies in data sharing, right? You might have really good, rich data in your, you know, your data warehouse, but it's not talking, talking to your marketing automation platform. So now you can't even trigger campaigns based on the things that are most important to your customers. So when those things aren't talking, you're just not, your organization is not capitalizing on your investment in that area. Um, you know, there's always the potential of the collision of data between those tools, right? If you get into the circular, circular motion between your CRM and your marketing automation and your e-commerce platform, and those things are not really seamlessly laid out or connected in the right way, you can have redundancy, you can have overwriting of data, you run into a lot of challenges, um, you know, w when those things aren't really working together um, hand in hand. Um, typically, in a, in a situation where you have a Frankenstack dominating, there's a, lo uh, a r high resistance to change. There's inflexibility. So when, you, when your business grows and you're, you, know, you enter a new market, you bring a new product to, to the market, what you're finding is that oh, my tools really are just not doing what I need them to do. Right? I have this idea. I want to do this, this, and this, and I can't do it because what I have today is totally inflexible. Um, it ends up being an individual sport instead of a team sport, right? So when you have all these disparate technologies sort of held together, um, you have different teams that are running them with different initiatives and different MBOs and different um, things that are motivating them and driving them. And so how could it possibly be a team sport when you have all these individual groups? And what you really want is all those things working together because it is a team sport. It has to, in order to deliver to customer experience appropriately and adequately, it has to be all those things working seamlessly. And it really makes it difficult for you to truly personalize the experience. You might be able to truly, you might be able to personalize subsets of that experience. So maybe on the web or maybe in, you know, your email, maybe in a few different ways, but you really can't truly personalize and build a real relationship the way that, again, in real life, that it would be meaningful to you as an individual um, without um, bringing those things together. And the one thing that you know we consistently see over and over again, particularly on the marketing automation side of things, is that oftentimes what com companies are doing is they're compromising, right? And the compromise isn't a healthy compromise. It's a compromise in the way that you let your technology lead your process rather than you leading your process and letting your technology follow suit. So you're following their playbooks and their recipes and things like that, but what you really should be doing is saying, no, in my organization for my customers, it should look like this, and my technology su should support it in this way. And on the flip side, we have Voltron, right? Everybody know who Voltron is? I know I'm sort of old, so, um, right? So a cartoon from many years ago, um, Voltron is the combination of uh, robot warriors who come together and build this like super robot that saves the world and he's super awesome and everybody loves him and he's a superhero. So, you know, when we think about, um, you know, pulling together your, your MarTech stack, Voltron is really, um, should be the role model, right? It's, it's you're coming together and these things are coming together in a way that the sum of the parts is bigger than their individuals, right? And so, um, you know, we oftentimes think about, at least in my perspective, we think about marketing first and MarTech stack first, but really what you should be thinking about is your tools across all of your different teams, right? Your, what tools are your sales teams using? What tools are your product team using? You know, what tools are they, is your, uh, are your support teams using? And how are they talking to each other in a way that you can then turn that into to Voltron instead of Frankenstack? Um, you know, by creating, you know, by pulling these things together, you're creating a powerful force. Um, you can, you know, in a situation where it's, it's Voltron dominating, um, you can pivot quickly, you can move fast and say, okay, as your business grows, as you're bringing those products to market, you should be able to move quickly, um, you know, to, to deliver that vision that you, you're, you want to achieve. 
you can easily c recover from downtime with stable and resilient technology. You're not waiting, you know, days and days and days for stuff to be fixed because you had a special developer code a few things to make the, those work together. If they're working seamlessly, you can recover quickly. Um, you can get as close as real time as possible. We have a customer who, um, you know, they use marketing automation to promote uh, offers on ski, ski resorts. So they're a mountain, and so as customers that they recognize check in and buy a daily ticket, they're immediately sending them information about weather, they're sending them information about signing up for a, an annual ticket. So immediately as that data is coming through, they're sharing it with their customers. It's because they have that seamless stack and they can pull those things together and, and make it meaningful at the right time, the right message to the right person. And really it allows you to be flexible and create a truly customized or a personalized um, experience for your customers. And so one thing that, you know, when I think about uh, think about uh, Voltron, I oftentimes see customers want to jump to consolidation. And consolidation is great. You know, we all want to, you know, we all want a few less tools in our stack, particularly get rid of those tools that really aren't doing much for us. Um, and that that that's definitely a healthy conversation. But, you know, I would caution you to remember that it's, it's not the silver bullet. Just because you consolidate to one tool or one group of tools or one, you know, vendor, that's not always the right answer. Um, you know, it really depends on your organization and, and really taking that um, to heart and understanding what are we, what are we trying to do? Our, our business is unique compared to our competitors, compared to other people in the industry, compared to other industries. What's unique to us and what kind of technology do we need to support that? Um, streamlining some of those solutions can help though, right? So while you're not consolidating your entire stack, maybe there's a few things where you're like, okay, there's a lot of overlap between this and that. Maybe we can consolidate those two things. And, um, you know, we, we often see this and we're, you know, I'm a little bit biased in this way um, because we're a marketing automation platform and the platform's fairly ro robust in a lot of ways. There's a lot of feature functionality. You know, we have these conversations where somebody has a landing page tool and a social tool and an email tool. And I'm like, okay, well, we can, we can bring those all into one thing. That doesn't mean we want to be your CRM and your e-commerce platform and everything else you're trying to do, but it does help you narrow down some of those things and, and make it a little bit more manageable. Um, and again, it should support your business. You shouldn't be force fitting something into your business and, and um, you know, relying on their process that some product manager at some software company came up with. It should be your process and what, you know, is unique to you guys. And you should be looking for flexibility and openness, right? In today's, um, you know, software development, um, you know, 10 years ago, nothing was open and nothing was flexible. It was like, you followed this and this is how it works and these how, this is how these systems talk. But today, you know, software is, is being built with flexibility and openness in mind. And so as you're looking for new solutions, that should be on your checklist. You should be asking that question and you should be asking the vendors, how do you do that? In what ways, literally, um, that can help you be more um, effective with your, um, with your solutions and with your go-to-market. So now that you're thinking differently about technology, let's talk a little bit more about how you can be strategic with personalization. So um, that definition at the top, personalization is a means for meeting the customer needs more efficiently and effectively. That's a, um, a definition I got off the Tech Target site. Actually, it's not something I wrote. Um, it's a, I thought it was a pretty good description of how we might want to think about um, personalization. So really the way that I often will talk about it is how do you cross the bridge from digital to um, uh, connect each individual, um, connect to each individual um, digitally. And so, you know, things as simple as meeting and greeting your audience when people return. You, you know it's me. You, you, you track me with cookies and everything else. Like, you know who I am. When I come back, you know, it's okay to say my name. My name's Katie. Say hello, right? That's okay. Um, you know, learn about their interests. You know, if it's implicit, great. If it's explicit, even better. Tell me, tell me what you're interested in. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you want to hear about, what you don't want to hear about. Tell me how you want to hear about it. If you never, ever want me to send you an email, but you love text messages, great. I'm happy to send you a text message. Um, you know, share helpful content and offers that are interesting to them, right? We often, as marketers, have a habit of falling into the, um, oh, so did you hear about me? Did you hear about my solution and what I did and all these things about me, 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 right? And so we have to always, always remember, and this is, you know, this is not something that's new, I hope, to anybody in the room, but, you know, always remember that it should be about them and what their interests are. You know, most importantly, a personalized experience does build trust and loyalty, um, which is what we want to build those relationships. And at the end of the day, we can never forget that we're selling to people, individuals, you know, and so our job should be, how do I talk to people, not talk to, 
you know, IP address 14.3.6. whatever. So I thought I'd um, throw a few ways that you can sort of apply personalization pretty quickly. So um, these are things that we share, the tips that we share with our customers oftentimes um, where they can just take personalization and, and get going on it right away. So we often joke about, you know, when we talk to some customers, their idea of personalization is, hello, first name, right? Of course, the standard email opening and a um, little bit of code you put in your emails to make sure you get that right. I will say that I get a lot of emails from people that I'm a customer of that do not say my first name. They just say, hey there, which I find to be, as a marketing automation provider, I find that to be really annoying. But um, that's just me. I think that's better than hello, first name. <laughs> when it doesn't fill in, I would agree with that. Yep, been there. Um, yeah. Uh, so a couple of different ways that, you know, we often talk about it, one of which is segmentation. So when we talk about segments uh, within the platform, it's more than just, you know, segment by, okay, anybody in the United States. That's great. That's a great starting point. So geography is one way. Another way is demographic. What, how granular can you get around some of these segments so that you can really deliver a message that's relevant to them? Um, other types of segmentation that we often talk about with our customers, you know, demographic, firmographic, affinity and interest, like um, we have a customer who sells um, interactive um, books, stories through Amazon Alexa. And so, um, you know, they have this big database of understanding who their customers are, what their interests are. Do they like thrillers? Do they like, um, you know, romantic uh, stories, things like that. Um, so really pulling that information in so that you can segment and get really granular around how you're um, delivering those messages. Looking at past behavior, what have they done? What haven't they done? What do you want them to do next? What do you think would be helpful for them to do next? So leveraging some of that past behavior, whether it's web behavior, whether that's, um, you know, are they clicking on your emails? Have they talked to your sales team? Have they contacted your support team? All of those count. Um, and then again, thinking about real-time behavior. What, do you, what can you know immediately that you can affect a message immediately for them so that they really feel like, okay, I'm, I'm a person and they recognize me and they know who I am. The next area is thinking about dynamic content. And so um, we talk about dynamic content not only in emails. So it's an email that you might want to switch out a, a segment of the, the content that it'll incorporate a little bit of set, that segmentation. So if it's a customer, you want, might, might want to talk to them differently. If it's a C-level executive versus uh, a director level executive, you might want to talk to each of those a little bit differently with your message, maybe your offer, um, and using dynamic content not only in your emails, but also on your website. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking about that already today. It's a big topic. I think here at DrupalCon, but um, you know, really thinking about how you can engage your audience further with um, you know using that dynamic content on your website. It's getting easier and easier to do. The tools are out there, so it's really about okay, creating that vision for yourself and for your team and what you want to deliver, and then acting on it. Um, using multiple channels. So I talk about this as, you know, getting outside the inbox, right? Using other channels. And it's funny because I think some of us are reluctant, particularly on B2B marketing, to kind of look at other channels. Like email's the channel, that's the channel. Then you have your website, that's great. Okay, so now we can do a little bit more with website. But what we're really encouraging customers is think even broadly. How are you using text messages? Are you using text messages? Are you using mobile app notifications? Can you do this all in the same platform? Can you pull all these things together so it does feel like a seamless experience? Um, you know, and one of the things that I often encourage is, you know, thinking beyond those channels, test everything and don't assume anything. Um, you know, in, in B2B, we were usually saying, okay, text me. There's no way our customers are going to respond to text, but I don't know. Try it. See what happens. See if they react to it. Um, and last but not least, um, or actually managing preferences, letting them um, set up their preferences and tell you, you know, when they want to hear from you, how they want to hear from you, um, and keeping those up to date so that you're giving them the messages when they want to hear them and how they want to hear them. And then mach machine learning, I kind of joke about this with my little um, uh, bullet there, but really it's thinking about um, how, how can we, it's, it's early on, but how do we start adopting machine learning to interpret some of these things for us, understanding, okay, well, this person, they, they open emails all the time. Okay, well, I think that's their preferred channel. Let's, let's Im, you know, implicitly understand that that's what it is. Whereas, um, you know, or other things, like they, they like to receive messages at this time of day. They never read stuff on Friday afternoons. Who does, right? Um, so really thinking about some of those things as well. So just to wrap it up, a um, couple of key takeaways, uh, creating memorable, memorable experience for um, you know, our customers is mission critical. We all have to be thinking about this um, every day. It doesn't have to be boil the ocean, but it, you know, starting to pick away at that um, day by day is, is I think, going to be important for all of us. 
Um, positive ex experiences depend on relationships, so building those relationships with your customers is, is really critical. Um, again, relationships are formed in, you know, a couple of different ways, two-way dialogue, um, you know, exchanging a value, and then uh, delivering that personalization. Be smart with your technology um, choices. They should be a force multiplier, not a deterrent. Right, thinking about it, like how is this going to make me that much better? How is my team going to be that much more efficient? But above all that, how does this help me deliver a better customer experience for my customers? How am I going to engage with them even better and give them what they want? And then last but not least, personalizing more than just first name. I think personalization is going to be such a, a critical factor for this experience, um, you know, building a good experience down the road for your customers. So really starting to think about, okay, what can we do today and tomorrow and the next day? Again, it doesn't have to be all at once, but starting with the attitude of, you know, taking action there. So that's all I have. I just a few reminders as asked by DrupalCon is, you know, remember to check out these contribution opportunities fill out the survey. I'm sure you guys have seen these slides. Hopefully, maybe I'm not the only one. Um, and that's it. So I'm here if you want to ask any questions. And then we have a table downstairs. But I know it's lunchtime. So I won't feel offended if you guys bolt out of here and go get some food. Thanks.